Hey, JR Feeland here from South Jordan Horse Lessons, teaching you how to pick out a horse's feet. We've got Duke here that we're going to be doing this on, and I'll show you the tools here. Here's the tools that I like to use. You either have a, a pick, there comes in a lot of different things, but you're just looking for kind of a uh, curved shaped metal piece that you can kind of pick out the horse's foot. In a pinch, you can use, I really like a, a blade screwdriver also is what you can use. So, all right here, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pick up this horse's foot. So we're gonna let him know we're coming in. We're gonna put our hand up here on his shoulder, drag it in, get down here to the chestnut. Notice he's starting to rock his weight. And notice I'm gonna kinda tap my elbow in there too. Now we pick this up, pick this up. Now I had just picked this horse's hoof out just a second ago, but then my hat fell off. So that's why we're redoing the video here. But uh, this is going to be a good example of what we want to see here first before we go do the other three uh, feet. So here, what I started with is I started here on the hind end, or on the, on the back part of this here, and I started inserting and picking forward. Inserting and picking forward, inserting and picking forward. Notice the shoe here. This is a shoed horse, shod horse. And uh, you notice here we got the frog here. This is the triangular thing here. Now this frog here is a spongy type material that you don't ever want to puncture or don't ever want to mess with too much and drag a, you know, you know, poke in too hard. Now all this other material on the outside is that hair-like material or fingernail-like material that you can absolutely scrape. So you would just go like this, pick it forward, pick it forward, like this, pick it forward, pick it forward. here it's because you want to get all the gunk out because you want to prevent a, uh, a fungal infection called thrush that, uh, that a horse can develop the other thing you're trying to do this for is to pick out any rocks or anything that you have in there because you could uh, uh, just like a human if you walked around all day with a uh, rock in your foot or in your shoe that would cause a sore and same thing with a horse that'll cause an abscess in the horse's hoof okay we'll come back here you can tell he knows we're coming back here on this hind hoof. So we're gonna bring this in, have him pick this up. So now you can see this definitely needs to be picked. We're gonna hold his hoof in. And all this, just like I said, we're gonna insert here and start picking out here. Duke's saying hi to everybody out there. We're gonna keep picking, but notice how I, I put it in on these corners here to not, uh, get in towards that frog. I wouldn't want to, you know, uh, push in towards in that area on the frog. I notice I'm going to kind of get this corner here at the edge. Just kind of make sure all that stuff is out. Not the hugest of deals, but we'll get that piece there too. Okay, now we're going to come around. We've got the next horse that's ready to go too. We're going to move him over. This is why we do this. This rock could have caused an abscess in here. So this is exactly why we get these out of here and pick out all this dirt and grime. Now the same thing on the hinds as on the fronts. You got your frog, your triangle. And you've got all this hard material that's out here that they uh, put the horseshoe into here. So you to make sure that's all nice and clear. Now we come to the fourth hoof. See how I really let them know I'm coming in. I start here from the withers, come down here, grab inside the shoulder. See how he's already cocking his foot. And if I have to, notice I pinched that back of the fetlock there, or that fur that's kind of there. You can also kind of pull on that. That can pick it up. Notice we got another rock in there. It's exactly why anytime before you ride and uh, sometimes while you're riding you'll feel that the, the rock is in there too and you have to step off and get the rock out of the out of the hoof real fast. So same thing. I'm going to start where that rock is and uh, you just start inserting from the hind and start picking forward.
got your frog, and you got your deal here. All right. Now, some of you probably noticed the horse's hoofs are pretty muddy. We're out here in Utah, and Utah gets really dry, and then there's times where it gets really, really wet. And uh, right now we're in a time where it's really, really dry. We are in the middle of June right now, and uh, you can see here on the ground it's really dry. And uh, what I always say is get a professional farrier uh, or horseshoer to come out and, and uh, give you consultation with your horses. The hoofs are one of the main maintenance items that you have on a horse that you're always dealing with. And that uh, was per recommendation of my horseshoer or my farrier is what they call them in the professional world. And uh, what he said is uh, to do is, uh, um, and the reason why that's hard on a horse where it's wet and then it's dry, the ground, is if you're in a, in a climate where it's always wet, kind of like a Florida or something like that, the horses will adapt. They will send less nutrients and less, you know, oils of their body down to the, to the hoof because it's naturally in the climate got a lot of that to, to saturate that hoof. And, and to uh, so they'll adapt now if you live in Arizona also it's always dry there and I might have some people from Arizona or Florida that'll say no we've got our issues too and that's all right I'm sure you do but uh, if it's always dry the horses will adapt too and they'll naturally send more moisture and more of their oils of their body down to the hoofs uh, to uh, to adapt here in Utah though where it's dry then it's wet it's hard they try to adapt one way and then all of a sudden it switches on them so what we've done is we've created a mud hole over by where their feed is and uh, so as they're feeding that mud hole puts that moisture back in those hoofs so that uh, that we don't crack up now later on what i'll do is i'll make sure to wash all this off it's good to get the mud cleared off of this because that can cause an issue too staying too dirty too long um but uh, Thanks for watching JR at South Jordan Horse Lessons. I always say consult a horseshoer or a farrier as you're, as you're dealing with your horse's foot, but uh, this is gonna be a daily task uh, that you have to do as you're riding your horse. Thanks for watching.